Can you hear me? Okay. Well, great. So, hello again. Wow. Such a big group. 415, the last day of the conference, and you are still here. So, thank you for going to our presentation. Our topic is called Breaking Down the Barriers, Testing Desktop Apps with Selenium. So, let's start. First, something about us. My name is Michael, and this is Philip. Hi. We are both Q engineers. Mostly we care about test automation and generally about uh, continuous deployment, continuous delivery in uh, Ava Software, which is antivirus company. If you have some question on us and there won't be time in the end of the presentations, mail us or reach us on the LinkedIn. What is going to be today about? First, we're gonna do some intro, what we are doing, and then I'll pass the word to Philip. Yeah, um, there will be some introduction about uh, what is actually going on and why we are trying to uh, use Selenium for testing desktop applications. Um, and after that, uh, I will try to do some live demo of that. So you actually see that it's not that, e it's not that hard, it's a pretty simple process, and uh, you could run it, uh, uh, run it easily yourself if you have such an application in need of uh, testing. Uh, and at the end, uh, just a few last words, how that is actually useful in the whole continuous integration uh, environment. You know, that we want to prove that we are not just talking, that we are doing something, and we want to show you that it's possible to do it. So let's start with us company, because thank, thank to us company, we are here and we are able to tell you how we are using I'm sorry, Philip, I have to say it's Selenium. I promise <laughs> to Philip that I will not say it's Selenium uh, in my presentation. I'm sorry, I said it already. So, we are Ava Software. Who knows Ava Software? Let me ask. Wow, great. Uh, what are we doing? Antivirus? Security, yeah. This is what we are trying to be then. We are antivirus and security company. We are most well known for our Windows antivirus. And who is using antivirus for Windows? Okay. And who is using antivirus for Mac? Um, are you satisfied with it? Did it catch any virus? Yes, yeah, so, so great, so it works. This it, it, it works. So our most uh, famous product is Avast Antivirus for Windows itself. Then we have products for uh, mobile security. We have VPNs, or which we call SecureLine. We have Cleanup, which is performing uh, performance tool to improve the performance of the computer. If you have there are a lot of users have lots of strange apps installed, so it might clean it. And this is the topic of the these days that the passport. Uh, we have a password manager, and we are not just only Windows company, we are also running our apps or Android, Mac OS. Generally together, uh, we have about 230 million users. And if you wanna know something about us, just go to our web page. Yesterday, during a lunch, I was talking with one gentleman, and he asked me, where is the Czech Republic? I don't know. It. So, uh, I said Czechoslovakia, and it was better. And then he asked, how many people are there in Czech Republic? I said, 10 million. And he said, but there is 10 million people in, only in Bangalore, so we are small. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't know us, yeah, if you know Germany, so just next to Germany, there's a small state, and that's Vienna. <laughs> but let's back uh, to our topic here, why we are here. The question, what we were asking when we were trying to test our Windows Avast antivirus was how to test, how to write checks for Avast UI. It looks like this. It's a desktop application, Windows desktop application, it's not a browser. So we were asking that, what can we do? We try to automate it with Autoit, 
didn't succeed. Then we looked more deeply to the UI. We used SPY++, look how the MFC object looks in our UI. And then we saw the objects, but then we realized that we don't see the buttons for this stuff. And the reason why we haven't seen is this. When we looked into Avast UI from a different point of view, we have seen that it's a normal web page. This is just HTML code, as, as you probably know. And then we saw, OK, so there will be maybe some possibilities how we can do UI testing. But when we look on the antivirus architecture, what do you think? What is the most important part of the architecture uh, in antivirus? Which part of antivirus is the most important? Scan. Yes, right. And the second? What? Which? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Licensing. Because <laughs> you need money. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we have engine, which is mostly written in the C++, some parts in assembler. It's crazy. I, I'm glad that I don't work with this assembler part. But what uh, we are able to write tests for this part in our QE department, there are some integration tests. Uh, we have end-to-end -end tests in Python using Boost framework. But generally, in this part, there is uh, there are no UI tests are needed. So, okay, why to test UI if the UI tests are not needed. No, it's not true. Oh, I forgot that there is this amazing picture there. It, it just shows the scale of how many configurations of operating systems we have to test the antivirus. So we are sure that, if, that you are secure. Because if you release a version and your computer goes blue, then you are angry. <laughs> what have you said? I talk about the antivirus engine. That's what is not interesting for this conference. What is more interesting is the UI. The UI consists of two frameworks. One is, and the old part is the HTML8 layout framework being used in all parts of the UI. And the new is Ceph framework. HTML layout uh, enables us to represent our UI as a normal web page. It's, a, it's the old, it's the render of HTML code, and it's based on IE6. Does anyone use IE6 still? Or? No, no, no. Yes? It's some corporate big banking. Yes. Luckily, we are not a bank. <laughs> <laughs> and with HTML layout, is there a problem that the big parts are represented as normal MFC objects for Windows. But inside these MFC objects, there are these HTML buttons and links and everything you know. And we were totally blind how, how to reach it. Yeah. We tried to use SQLy, which is a tool which is good for testing when you click on the objects based on a on their representation as a, as a picture, but we were, we were, we were simply we were not successful. Then we appeared Ceph, which is the shortcut for Chrome Android framework. Philip is going to talk about it. And with Ceph, uh, we have uh, the new parts of the UI. So right now we are still in the process of a continuous transition. As from the old HTML layout application, we are moving to Ceph more and more and more, and in, in the next year, I believe that we'll be completely out of, out of HTML out and everything will be fine. And this allows to use this magic application, which I'm not allowed to say right now. And magic happened. Generally, I have to admit that for us, it used to be that we failed. Right now, I'm passing the word to Philip, and he will tell you about the success. Thank you, Michal. Um, 
So yeah, we used to fail. So what was our motivation to actually uh, look for a new tool for testing? Um, the uh, UI testing tools uh, are usually very clumsy. Uh, they are very inflexible, and that's all based on that they are actually image-based, um, that when sm one small thing changes in, in, your, in your UI, you have to rewrite or re-record a majority of your tests, unless you're using some modern tools. Um, so um, as a result of that, the maintenance costs of those tests are usually pretty high, and that's why uh, they are not usable. Um, so what's the solution? Um, well, uh, there are, uh, we, we need a testing tool that can access the base structure of the UI, that can see it uh, as a developer would, or as you can see a website when you uh, look at, uh, at its DOM. And uh, furthermore, uh, that would allow us to create a uh, testing framework uh, that we could use that can further lower the maintenance costs of our tests. And uh, it kind of turns out that uh, we already have that in web, right? We have Selenium. So, um, <laughs> so uh, we tried to look at um, possibilities of using this wonderful tool uh, with our application, uh, and uh, it kind of turned out that it is possible. So, testing desktop applications with Selenium, um, yeah, I'm, su I'm, I'm saying, sure, why not? Let's do it. Um, and uh, why should it, uh, why is this topic uh, important at this age? Uh, it's because uh, more desktop applications nowadays are not written uh, using Windows components, but are actually written as a website. Uh, so when you have uh, some website code running there, it usually means that you have some browser emulation running in your application that is actually displaying that code. And that's uh, why Selenium might be a good idea to use for testing desktop applications nowadays. So where the magic is? Um, well, um, we first, we connect uh, Selenium to, uh, to the application to be actually able to test it. Uh, then uh, we, will able, we will be able to access its DOM uh, just a, as a normal website. Uh, and after that, obviously control it, do all the, uh, all the Selenium specific stuff like clicking elements and finding the elements on the site. Uh, and furthermore, uh, we will be able to actually create a Selenium framework. Um, by the way, um, how many of you have already created some testing framework to help with your tests? Great, that's quite a few. And anybody did this in Python? Well, al almost none. I know that Java is the most popular one. So there are is 100 people here, so we have new 100 Selenium frameworks, right? <laughs> Almost. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, sorry. There are some prerequisites for, for our testing. Um, one of them uh, is, as was mentioned, the Ceph which stands for Chromium Embedded Framework. Um, anybody using that already? Okay, great. So there's a lot of possibilities to do with, uh, with this wonderful tool. What it does, it is a basically browser engine uh, that, provides, uh, that provides a desktop application with the capabilities of a normal browser and allows you to, allows you to render web pages inside your web desktop applications. Um, the web pages don't necessarily need to be online. They're usually local because you don't want uh, some loadable uh, co components that are online in your desktop applications. That usually seems weird. But you also have this possibility. So if you have some uh, content that you want to uh, have locally stored and uh, uh, in some parts of the application that uh, you want, uh, uh, that when, when timing really matters, that you want uh, to have it fast, you can do that, uh, and uh, when you are implementing, I don't know, a store inside of your application, you can also build that store as a online website and then load it, uh, load it later in, into your app. So yeah, Ceph is a good tool to, to use, I think. Um, then um, for uh, creating, uh, creating the test, when you're doing a test for your website, you usually um, 
try to uh, find a way how to how to find that element on, on the site. So um, you're using a debugging console in your browser for that. Um, for a desktop application, you don't have a debugging console. You cannot simply press F12 and display a debugging console. But as it turns out, there are some tools for that. There are some developers tools for Ceph that you can actually insert into your application, which will then provide you with the capabilities of debugging console, which will uh, then help you in writing your tests. Um, then you need uh, Google Chrome in this, uh, in this uh, case, because Ceph is a Chromium-based framework, and also the console is based on the Chrome debugging console, so it won't, unfortunately this won't run in any other browser than Chrome. Uh, and last, you of course need the Chrome driver, the Selenium component. So how do you open the debugging console? How do you actually plug it into your application? Um, well, turns out it's pretty simple. You just need the libraries for that. Then you will select some port that you have uh, available and you will, uh, you will open uh, open that port for the console to connect to. Um, let me actually show you how, how that works. So, here we have a typical Windows computer. It's running Windows 10. Um, we have uh, Avast installed, as you would expect. And uh, how, do we, how do we look at uh, what, what this page looks like uh, when we want to look at, at the DOM? Um, so, um, actually this one is still written in, in HTML layout, so let me switch to some, some that isn't. So, for example, here, this page, this page is, is written in, in Ceph. Um, I can fire up the browser, and uh, I can connect to, uh, to the application. So, I know it's running on port 5555, and it's running on my local host. So, when opening the page, I should see the console. I don't. Well, that's because uh, I didn't actually open the port yet. Uh, so uh, let's take a step, uh, take a step back and look at all the prerequisites. So this is the base folder of uh, of your application, uh, and that's also where the Ceph libraries are located. So when you look for libcef, that's the main Ceph library. Uh, you see it's there. Based on the version of the libcef, you can select the version of the tools that you need and uh, also insert them at the same path that, uh, that these libraries are. So when I will now look for, uh, look for dev tools, um, I see that I have them already, uh, already copied here. Uh, I have the correct version. You just have me, to, have me trust. To, to, please trust me on this. <laughs> um, so now, uh, I will actually kill kill my application. And uh, what I will do is that I will restart it, but I will restart it with some special parameter that actually opens the port for the console uh, to connect to. We have it uh, here. Looks the same, which is good because we want to be testing the right UI, the production UI, not some testing version of it. So let me navigate again to some page with, that is written in Ceph. Uh, and let's look at it in Chrome. So now at the, is it visible? Slightly. Um, here we have the address with the port 5555. It's on our local host. And we can see that there is some page that we can open the console for. So let's do just that. And uh, now we, uh, we see the DOM of, of our page. Um, we can even uh, do the usual stuff like uh, selecting, an, selecting an element. So let's try to look at this button. We see it, that it works, that we can actually see all the information that we would expect. Okay. Let's, back, let's get back to the presentation. So how do we connect the driver to the application? Well, we uh, need to have the console up and running and connected to the application. 
and then we, what we will do, we will not actually connect directly to our application, but we will be connecting to the debugging console, uh, which, uh, as we just saw, provides us access to our application. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we will be able to control the application through the driver, through the console, and then to the actual to the actual site that is rendered there. And now we can just let Selenium do its job. Um, okay, how how this is done? How do we connect Selenium driver to uh, to the debugging console? Well, uh, let's take a look at some code. Um, it's um, actually a pretty pretty simple code. Um, it's uh, a here we have a driver object in in our Selenium framework. Um, this is written in Python, by the way. Uh, and uh, at the beginning, we are specifying what the port is that we will be connecting on, uh, the address, and uh, kind of the mandatory uh, pass to our driver that we will be connecting to. Um, what's happening then? Uh, we have some initialization method in uh, in our driver object, and we will be specifying some options for for that driver. We can use the standard Chrome options because it's Chrome based, but we need to add some debugger address, which is the address of our console that is connected to the application, and then we can just create a new instance of uh, of the driver with uh, with the appropriate parameters. And this provides us with Selenium driver uh, that is able to uh, execute our commands, execute our script, and is connected to the desktop application. Um, let's, let's take a quick look at uh, another example. Um, uh, so just that you can see how we are using the driver. So this is some um, simple page object uh, for one of the pages uh, in, in Avast UI. Uh, and um, we, we are doing some waiting here. We are using the driver instance that we saw on the previous slide, uh, and we are just uh, waiting for some element and then locating uh, an element by, by XPath. So uh, um, we're actually not doing, uh, no, doing anything special. From now on, it's just a standard Selenium that you are already using for testing your websites. So let's... Um, take a look again at a practical example of, uh, of what's actually going on there. So, here we are again at uh, our favorite machine, and uh, we can take a look at, uh, at the test. Um, so what is, um, what is actually going on here? Um, we see some, uh, is it visible? Oh, let me, let me, So what, what, we, what we can see here is um, we have some base class of the test that is actually doing, do, do, doing some setup for us. Um, we, are, we are preparing the test as a usual unit test is prepared. Um, then, okay, let me get back to it. Yeah, and then we are doing a setup uh, before, before each test. Um, so let's run them. Let's uh, look at what is actually going on. Okay, some setup is happening. We are restarting the Avast UI. It is done. It started the UI uh, with the console open, connect, uh, and it ran some uh, some sample script. We the tests are actually based on some replays of a functionality that is there, so they are more stable, so don't, we don't have to wait for the scan to finish every time. And what it's doing now, it's waiting for the Selenium to connect and then do some quick checks just uh, uh, to see what was actually rendered on the page and if it was rendered based on the data that we served in, into, the, into it. Um, in the second test, um, this is just an example of uh, some interaction, so you can see that uh, it, we can no, not only uh, not only read what's on the page, but we can also navigate it. And uh, I hope you noticed that this was, in the first example, it was closed. Now we clicked, uh, uh, clicked on that row, and we actually opened it using Selenium. Um, so um, let's, uh, let's take a closer look on what, what was going on. 
Um, and let's run the tests again, but uh, with some breakpoints involved. Okay, um, so first there is some setup, setup happening. Um, let me minimize this. Is it visible? Great. Uh, and uh, we are we are just doing some. Yeah, we are just doing some preparation. Um, we are uh, setting up the environment, uh, and uh, we are uh, preparing the uh, we are preparing the uh, replay that uh, that will then uh, that that will then be tested. So let's move to the next point. Here's the correct button. So now we should uh, we should see it uh, start up the UI again. We should see it uh, run the uh, run the replay. We should see it prepare the environment, and uh, it will stop right before uh, connecting uh, right before connecting uh, the driver. Okay. Um, so now uh, we can see that we're actually in the. Oh, it's small again. Let me. Let me help you with that. Great. So um, now um, we can see that we are actually in the driver class, and we are in the initialization method of the driver. And uh, what is going on is that we are right before creating the instance of the driver. Um, so when this is executed, the Chrome driver, uh, its instance will be will be connected to uh, to our console. Uh, it will use some. It will it will use the defined options, which are basically the same of what we what we saw on on the slides. Um, so let's uh, let's move forward. Um, and let's see what uh, what will be happening next. So we we connected to the UI, and uh, we did some we did some quick checks as as in the first test. Um, and uh, right now we're again um, we're again uh, waiting for for the for the connection and. Uh, Clean, we just we just cleaned up after the test, and what is going on right now is we are doing the preparation preparation part, and I'm sorry I seem to have misclicked the button. Yeah. So let's actually stop this run, and. Let's even stop this session. Okay, it might work. Great. So that's the button that I wanted to click. <laughs> um, let's just give it a couple seconds before before it is ready. And uh, we will uh, take a look at the Selenium code that will be then executed by the driver. So from the, from here, um, we will get uh, to the right point, and great. Um, we need to get to the second test that uh, that will be uh, that we will be examining. So here we are ready for the second test again with the with the driver instance ready to be initialized. Let's step ahead, uh, take a step ahead, and now um, yeah. now um, you can see that we are actually in in the test class. We're inside some test, and we're inside some test that says just open vulnerability, um, which is the the red line that we're trying to 
trying to click on. So let's uh, dive into it on what, what's, what's happening. Now, okay, it's, a, it's visible. Um, so now, uh, at this point, we move to the page object. And uh, here we have implemented uh, a standard Selenium function, uh, which uh, uh, calls, the, calls the instance of our driver. It's try to, it tries to find some element by its class name. And uh, then what it does at the end is that it, it, it clicks on, on that element. So if we take a look at the UI, how it looks now, we can see that everything, everything is closed in its original state. And if we move one step ahead, we should see that the, that the UI is actually now open and that our Selenium code navigated through the console to our application and, uh, and executed there as on, as, as on a usual website. So that would be all for the demo. And let's go back to the presentation. Um, well, a few final words from me. Um, why I think that this is cool is because it's not only usable uh, for self-built desktop applications. Um, there are many other frameworks that uh, are nowadays spreading and that can be used to actually execute and render website-like code inside desktop application. And uh, all you need to do uh, is to find the correct driver if there is such available uh, that works uh, for uh, for that framework, and you can you can connect to it using uh, using the debugging console, and you can start using Selenium for testing desktop applications. Um, now let me pass the word back to Michael. Thank you. So no more browsers, but Chrome console is going to be used now for Selenium testing. Who's, who's in? It looks like almost everyone, okay. I promise to prove you that we are not just talking about this, but we are also using it. I'm asking myself a question, how often run we the test? And let me also ask you, how often do you run your tests? Several times per day. So th that's the same for us. We run our tests daily and often. We have three levels of tests. The first level are the short tests, are the most reliable tests what we have. They, are, they should tell us that if we have a new build of our antivirus, it won't break the computer. Then we have the medium. Uh, medium set of tests which are telling that the basic functionality of the Avast works and then we have a long suite of tests which tell us that all the components works in, in, in a proper way and actually this is where our UI tests are running. In the testing we are using this uh, circle approach that after build we deploy us to our testing environment and do the testing. So we are still not in that phase yet, but we would like to be that almost after each commit, have a new build and have everything tested. To be able to do this, we have a huge infrastructure. Uh, the core of the infrastructure is Jenkins, which is the test executor, which is running all, all the tests on all the operating systems. We have a Linux server farm, which is using DBV, and there is a virtual box with all the uh, operating systems. And with these three tools, we are running this matrix, which allow us to cover the most uh, used operating systems. The cute part about this is that uh, we are using the same infrastructure as we use for our non-UI tests and we are now able to reuse it for our UI tests using Selenium. And this brings uh, me to the last slide. 
you have some questions? Um, can we have microphone, please? Is the Ceph framework, um, does it work on all the OSs or is it only for Windows? Um, in our case, we are using it only for Windows uh, and as far as I'm aware, uh, it should be multi-platform. Other questions? Yeah, in my case, uh, we do have the same kind of application where we uh, have the CEF in, in a Windows application. But the problem in our case is, you know, uh, in order to get into that page, we have to log in, uh, we have to pass through the login page. But the login page is not a, is built on top of CEF. So somehow we have to handle with some other tools. So is there, do you face the same kind of issues in your case? I mean, where certain pages are built on top of CEF and some other pages are built on top, on top of .NET or something. Uh, is there any way to, you know, overcome these kind of sleepiness? So, if I understand it correctly, you have similar application, but the first uh, login step is different, is written in a different framework. Yeah, some sort of .NET framework. Yeah, so we had some success in a, with a SQL application. Yeah, so, we try, try this one and it my help in your case. Um, what actually uh, might be the solution here is to work more closely with your developers and if they would be able to provide you with some uh, API access to your application that you can use to navigate, uh, navigate the application, you can uh, do the first step uh, using that API. Uh, in fact, uh, we are also doing this in our, uh, our tests to actually limit uh, the interaction of Selenium with the UI in some cases when we really want to be sure that that action will happen every time regardless of what's rendered. Uh, so uh, when I uh, showed the demo and the uh, test was started and the environment was prepared, uh, it didn't use Selenium at all. Uh, it didn't click on any uh, run test button or anything. It just used some API call in the background and after that it plugged in the Selenium. So that might be a solution yeah, to your problem. This is kind of a good tip from Philip that everything what we do, we also consult with developers and we ask them to help us, like for example, to open the ports uh, to, yeah. to be able to log into console. Yeah. yeah. And uh, do you have access to the uh, source code that you have, the code snippet that you have shown to us as a demo? Pardon? I mean, the source, the code that you have shown to us as a demo, do you have the access? Um, can we see that? Score? Access to the source code. Uh, you mean if, if it's uh, somewhere available? Um, it is not, but uh, definitely the slides will be and they contain the important parts. Okay, cool, thank you. Or just write to Philip at this point. Um, any other questions? Uh, actually, before we pass the mic, uh, I might have one to answer. Um, someone uh, asked us yesterday if uh, this is usable also with Electron. And uh, as it turns out, uh, it is. So not only Ceph, but also Electron uh, is uh, Chromium-based. So you can just the same use a Chrome driver and you can build your own framework. But furthermore, um, there is actually some framework already written. It is called Spectron. And uh, it is a testing framework based on Selenium for, uh, uh, for Electron. So uh, yeah, Electron might be also the way other than Ceph to go. Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, I never tried uh, Selenium with desktop, but uh, the question is in mind. Mind is, is every desktop application contain HTML in background? Um, uh, so, sorry, your question is uh, how I mean, you are interacting what with percentage the of desktop application would this be useful for? Yep, yep. Um, I don't have the exact, exact numbers. Um, when you, uh, but uh, the general idea is he, here is when you uh, would try uh, this approach on some legacy application, um, you would uh, certainly fail because those applications are uh, written using uh, Windows components or the native components of, uh, of any OS. Um, so nowadays, um, the applications that are actually uh, using the more web-like UI approach uh, all of those should be eligible, uh, 
all of those, uh, there are uh, actually there are just two major uh, major frameworks for that. That's Electron and that's Ceph, and both of these uh, uh, on on both of these this approach is applicable. It um, really depends on the framework. Yeah, like in the past when there was HTML layout, it was no go for us. Then we switched switched to another framework, and now right now we are able to test it. Yeah, so. It depends on the architecture of the system. Okay, fine. Is there any other question? Um, yes, right behind you. Um, when you have a new build available, how do you deploy it to the X number of VMs that you have? Do you have a silent installation process or you're using a CM tool or something? Yes, uh, we have a silent installation process and we have another framework for installing and managing with the uh, virtual machines with you. So yeah, we, we have everything coded. Well, we're really grateful for that. Uh, uh, there was a wonderful talk about uh, this morning about merging UA and uh, operations. Um, it's already happened in our company. So we have uh, a uh, wonderful two guys from uh, QA Ops uh, and they're preparing the infrastructure and they're actually taking care of the installers. Um, so even before you get to your test, uh, what what happens in the in the setup, uh, what happens uh, in the Jenkins runner is that they will uh, fire up DVM, uh, install all the packages that you specify, which can also include your application, uh, and uh, will serve you a environment ready for testing. And after that, when you're done with your test, they will also tear down the VM or make it, uh, make it uh, lately available. If there are some issues found in, in the test, if you discover some bug, you can uh, then manually go to, to that VM, fire it up again, and start investigating if needed. So um, yeah, QA ops are really important, as was mentioned on the talk. Like this, this part what was mentioned in the morning that uh, infrastructure has to be reliable. Yes, it has to be very reliable, because then it helps you to focus on the testing, not on just on fixing infrastructure. Thank you. Please can you repeat it to Mike because we have yeah. it. Yeah, for the silent installation, I think we can use the Vagrant tool also. So again, it is an open source which create VMs in VirtualBox, Hyper-V, and all. So it has a boxes which you can simply call, and it will uh, silently install the virtual machine, and then it is ready to use. So you can try that. OK, great tool for somebody who doesn't have, uh, who doesn't have QA ops and wants to try it in a quick way, I think. Thank you for that. Um, OK, uh, it seems that this was our last question. Um, Again, uh, if you have any follow-up questions, don't hesitate, contact us, email us, write us on LinkedIn, uh, whatever, whatever you need, and we will be, we will be happy to help. Um, so thank you. Thank you for bearing it with us on one of the last presentations at this conference. And uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoy tomorrow, enjoy the workshops. Thank you. Thank you.